Now you mentioned uh, Redmond and his uh, his call on, on Irishmen basically to, mm. to join up and, and to go to fight in France and in Belgium and Flanders. Um, that led to a split in the volunteer movement and the majority went with Redmond, uh, although the national volunteers of the became fa mm. faded away in due course. But what effect did that have on the volunteers that were left? The Irish volunteers were smaller, but presumably uh, more uh, coherent in terms of, of their ideology. When Redmond committed the Irish volunteers to the war effort, a split occurred. Uh, the vast majority followed Redmond's advice. They too expected home rule and they trusted him. And effectively out of perhaps 170,000 in or about Irish volunteers uh, in the summer, early autumn of, of 1914, probably uh, over 90% went with Redmond. 12,000 plus perhaps stayed as the Irish volunteers and seceded essentially with holding the old name under Owen MacNeill. But those who remained to protect Ireland, as it were, the Irish volunteers who were not going to commit themselves to anybody else's war but for Ireland only, they would obviously have included the more advanced nationalists. So the core that remained, though smaller, was both more, uh, more, more committed, if one can put it that way, and more unyielding in terms of what it demand. It was also more easily penetrated by the conspirators, the Republican conspirators of the Fenian or the IRB movement. Uh, and overall, it provided a much smaller, coherent, but more intransigent uh, core group uh, as, as the future would, would, would tell. Redmond himself probably had reason to feel that he had carried most of nationalist Ireland with him in the autumn of 1914, uh, but the future would not be kind to him.